Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ini mute saya. Uh, berjumpa kembali dengan saya, Bapak Ibu, peserta annual meeting ketiga dari Relawan Jurnal Indonesia bersama dengan Crossref. Karena RRJI merupakan Crossref Sponsor Organization yang terbesar se-Asia. Asia, mungkin bahkan mungkin dunia ya karena uh, member kita sangat banyak Bapak Ibu yang saya hormati, hari ini kita akan membahas tentang update mengenai DOI kaitannya dengan cross dan metadata manager, akan hadir bersama kita nanti uh, Ibu Rahel kita nanti ya setelah Pak Andri menjelaskan dan memberikan overview tentang cross dan DOI di RJI dan bagaimana mekanismenya. Seperti yang tadi mungkin sudah hadir di acara pagi hari, di acara belajar OJF, bahwa hari ini, khusus untuk hari ini, yang jadi peserta akan ada reward untuk yang institusi yang belum memiliki DOI dan berkeinginan untuk mengurus DOI, itu ada free annual fee untuk 2020. Jadi Bapak Ibu bisa nanti langsung ke link dan nanti ada teman kami yang akan menjelaskan prosesnya dan bagaimana. Nah, untuk mempersingkat waktu, saya persilahkan Pak Andri Putra Kesmawan sebagai Ketua Pengurus Pusat Relawan Jurnal Indonesia untuk Ya, membuka acara, terus kemudian memberikan paparan yang sudah dipersiapkan. Saya persilahkan Pak Andri, karena hari ini acaranya bentuknya adalah meeting, jadi hari ini kita berdiskusi, ya Bapak-Ibu kalau mau bertanya bisa raise hand, atau kalau misalnya tidak mau raise hand, boleh langsung ke chat box kita ya. Di situ sudah ada apa namanya teman-teman yang akan mencatat, nanti pertanyaannya akan kita bahas gitu uh, jadi bapak ibu hari ini acaranya kan judulnya annual meeting jadi lebih banyak diskusi sehingga tanya jawab juga akan menjadi porsi yang lebih banyak terutama nanti waktunya rehal ya bapak ibu kalau tidak tidak apa kalau ingin mengetahui informasi lebih lanjut bisa ke chat box atau raise hand baik uh, mohon maaf sebelumnya saya memoderatori hari ini Uh, di rumah saja sehingga ada background suara-suara dari anak saya jadi sebelumnya saya mohon maaf kemudian untuk mempersingkat waktu saya serahkan ke Pak Andri Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh selamat siang salam sejahtera untuk kita semua yang saya hormati Ibu moderator teman-teman tim DOI RJI anggota serta pengurus pusat RJI <tuh> Yang saya hormati Bapak Ibu peserta annual meeting ya Crossref yang ketiga. Itu annual meeting Crossref ini untuk yang pertama dilaksanakan di Provinsi Bali ya tahun 2018. Annual meeting yang kedua di Bandung ya eh, tahun 2019 ya. Pada waktu itu enak ya, kita bisa bertatap muka, makan bareng sambil ngobrol, diskusi banyak gitu. Nah, pada kesempatan kali ini, karena situasi yang tidak memungkinkan, maka kita meetingnya lewat uh, virtual. Ini adalah penampakan ketika annual meeting yang di Bandung ya, ada 250. 250 peserta, 270 itu banyak ya kalau pesertanya itu datang semua itu banyak gitu. tapi kalau dibandingkan dengan peserta yang di zoom 200 itu saya kira kecil ya nah, sedikit sekali gitu. nah acara yang pertama itu di Bali tahun 2018 karena RJI menjadi sponsoring organisasinya Crossref itu tahun 2017 November ya 2018 kita coba usulkan ke Crossref untuk meeting Tujuannya apa? Ya tujuannya yang pertama kita uh, saling bertukar pengetahuan soal bagaimana DOI, soal bagaimana layanan-layanan cross-ref lainnya. Karena layanan cross-ref lainnya itu tidak hanya uh, uh, melulu soal DOI. Gitu. 
ada cross mark, ya, ada reference linking, ada cheat by, ada similarity, ada metadata. Dan itu semua Bapak Ibu juga perlu menggunakan. Nah, selama ini kan kita masih menggunakan hanya DOI dan cek plagiasi. Dan dan muter-muter aja di situ gitu. Nah, seperti itu. Itu pun masih banyak yang Um, apa namanya masih uh, ada kendala aktivasi ada kendala error itu dan uh, syukurnya teman-teman tim DOI uh, pada semangat untuk bantu ya bantu menjawab di grup-grup WA -grup dan di grup uh, Telegram seperti itu <tuh> uh, Bapak Ibu yang saya hormati uh, uh, meeting kali ini memang berbeda dengan tahun-tahun sebelumnya jadi mohon uh, harap maklum dan ini adalah seri yang pertama nanti Rahel akan masuk pukul 2 ya di meeting room ini jadi Bapak Ibu bisa langsung ngobrol banyak dengan Rahel um, untuk crossref sendiri di Indonesia ada ini ya ada dua orang ambasadornya uh, saya kira Bapak Ibu sudah kenal dengan Pak Muhammad Ratodi dan Muhammad Tanzil Multazam dari Surabaya semua ya Satunya dari Sidoarjo. Kalau saya uh, ya masih seperti ini, belum jadi ambasador apapun. <tuh> Yang belum kenal, uh, mohon izin saya kenalan dulu. Ini nama saya, saya masih mahasiswa, uh, aktivitas sehari-hari di RJI, dan uh, mulai bulan ini saya, uh, apa namanya, Alhamdulillah bisa bantu kampus, salah satu kampus di Jogja, seperti itu. Nah, bercerita soal RJ sebagai um, sponsoring organisasinya Crossref itu um, berawal dari pada waktu itu kita itu gelisah ya. Jadi gelisahnya kenapa? Teman-teman RJ gelisah bahwa pengajuan uh, akreditasi jurnal itu harus punya DOI. 2017 kan aturannya belum belum ada, tapi wacananya itu sudah muncul ya. Uh, baru ditetapkan tahun 2018. Nah, ada wacana pada waktu itu gimana kalau kita urus satu DOI, satu prefix digunakan oleh seluruh pengelola jurnal se-Indonesia. Nah, tapi itu tidak mungkin kan? Karena apa? Karena nanti publishernya ke RJI. Nah, itu tidak mungkin kan? Misal jurnal Bapak Ibu di kampus A, harusnya publishernya A, tapi karena pakai prefixnya RJI, maka publishernya ke RJI. Kan nggak mungkin nah makanya kita coba ngobrol banyak dengan dengan pihak crossref akhirnya ditemukanlah uh, formula yakni uh, kita uh, ditawari sebagai sponsoring organisasi nah kita juga mengajukan pada waktu itu nah kalau tidak salah um, 2017 November ya karena pada waktu itu korespondensinya masih dengan uh, saya dan Pak Tanzil uh, terus um, dimulai di uh, Februari Januari 2018 mulai ada teman-teman kita bentuk tim untuk pengurusan DOI. Kalau informasi dari ambasador Crossref terbaru itu kita memang terbanyak di dunia sebagai sponsoring organisasi gitu. Bahkan pihak Crossref itu bingung itu RJI kenapa bisa mengelola sampai ribuan kampus, ribuan institusi, ribuan publisher gitu dan nggak nggak apa namanya nggak nggak pada rame. Gitu. Nah, mereka juga bingung itu. Akhirnya eh, apa namanya? Nah, kita eh, coba jelaskan bahwa kita mengelolanya dengan hati ya, seperti itu. Dengan hati terus eh, budaya timur juga beda dengan budaya-budaya yang lainnya seperti itu. <tuh> nah, eh, informasi dari tim DOI ya. Eh, saya dikasih laporan ini mulai kemarin ya, mulai kemarin dan sampai hari ini sudah 1238. Bapak Ibu bisa buka doi.relawanjurnal.id ya. Di sana nanti akan li, uh, langsung terlihat ya, langsung terlihat um, apa namanya kampus-kampus mana atau institusi mana yang mengurus biaya melalui RJI. Kalau Bapak Ibu penasaran, kampus saya sudah ngurus belum? Nah, itu searching aja di sana, ada tombol uh, apa namanya? ada uh, uh, tombol search untuk diketikkan aja nama kampusnya nanti akan muncul. Kalau belum silahkan daftar. Nah daftarnya jangan jangan bapak itu ibu yang ikut di sini itu tapi disampaikan dulu ke pimpinannya ke LPPM atau ke pihak kampusnya tanyakan dulu sudah punya DOI belum. Gitu. Kalau belum daftar hari ini 
maka Bapak Ibu akan mendapatkan ini ya, pengurangan uh, gratis ya, gratis biaya tahunan di tahun ini. Ya. Di tahun ini tahun depan tetap bayar, tapi untuk tahun ini gratis ya, gratis annualnya seperti itu. <tuh> Uh, ini kewajiban RJI, saya kira ini sudah semuanya dilakukan, bahkan kita juga teman-teman uh, uh, RJI uh, bersama tim DOI juga membuat tutorial ya, baik yang di Youtube maupun di forum. Dan kita juga mengadakan, uh, beberapa kali mengadakan acara-acara yang, yang topiknya juga soal DOI, seperti itu. <tuh> nah, kewajiban Bapak Ibu ketika mengurus DOI ya, Um, itu sebenarnya ada di agreement. Kalau Bapak Ibu dulu mengurusnya lewat um, uh, apa namanya di tahun 2017 atau 18 itu kan menggunakan pila. Ada pila agreement. Nah itu ada klausul-klausul uh, yang Bapak Ibu sebenarnya diwajibkan untuk mengaktifkan semua artikel yang terbit di jurnal. Misal jurnalnya terbit tahun 2000, uh, 2001 gitu ya. Artikel-artikel yang terbit dari 2001 sampai sekarang itu wajib di DOI kan. Nah, seperti itu. Tapi memang biayanya beda. Biaya yang yang dua tahun ke sini itu itu uh, satu artikel satu dolar. Kalau dua tahun ke belakang ke yang sudah lewat itu uh, 0,15 dolar seperti itu. Itu per satu artikel yang diaktifkan. <tuh> Terus untuk kewajiban pasang logo ini juga saya kira uh, perlu dipasang. Bukan logo RJI ya. Tapi logonya crossfire seperti itu. Nah, Bapak Ibu yang saya hormati, jadi ini ya nanti ketika mau mengurus dari melalui RJI seperti itu, terus um, apa namanya, pokoknya ketika nanti mau mengurus, terus disampaikan dulu ke, ke pimpinan, kalau pimpinnya oke, okay, daftar hari ini. Karena um, apa namanya ada uh, pengurangan tadi ya, pengurangan biaya annual fee untuk tahun ini. Terus untuk yang berikutnya, jadi kalau Bapak Ibu um, apa namanya di kampusnya menghendaki untuk cek plagiasi, maka ketika nanti sudah dapat DOI, artikel jurnalnya sudah diaktifkan, maka Bapak Ibu berkesempatan untuk mengurus cek plagiasi. Ya, namanya similarity check. Similarity check ini uh, apa namanya? Uh, itu mestinya identiket ya. Jadi kalau Bapak Ibu ngurus identiket itu terlalu mahal, maka bisa langsung uh, 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 ngurusnya lewat crossref seperti itu. Bayarnya berapa? 0,75 atau 0,78? Saya lupa. Jadi uh, sekitar itulah. Jadi sekitar 13.000 sekali ngecek. Uh, misal kalau dibanding turunin kan agak mahal ya. Turunin kan harus sampai puluhan juta. Mestinya sama. Uh, masih satu perusahaan. <tuh> Nah, um, uh, ini ya, jadi saya kira itu informasi-informasi uh, yang berkaitan dengan pengajuan DOI. Gitu. Nanti ada teman-teman tim DOI yang yang akan memandu Bapak-Ibu ketika ada kendala-kendala atau ada hal-hal yang berkaitan dengan itu, maka nanti bisa, di, um, apa namanya, bisa dipandu oleh teman-teman di tim DOI. Terus terkait dengan, apa namanya, terkait dengan pembiayaan juga, nanti ada ada tim sendiri tim keuangan DOI yang yang bantu itu memang kita ya di RJ itu untuk pembayarannya ya pembayaran DOI itu uh, sistemnya deposit kenapa karena kita mengantisipasi tagihannya itu um, apa namanya uh, tertunggak ya terhutang kan nggak enak ya uh, misal perguruan tinggi besar kok ada hutang itu kan nggak enak gitu rasanya hutangnya kemana ke crossref gitu jadi Uh, apa namanya kita juga menjaga itu agar apa agar um, apa namanya tidak sampai uh, uh, apa namanya prosedur tahu gitu makanya uh, institusi-institusi yang menunggak itu ya kita bantu bayarkan dulu ke prosedur itu nah baru nanti kita coba tagih lagi ke uh, institusi-institusi yang ngurus uh, apa namanya yang ada tagihan itu Nah, ini uh, alur informasi tagihan ya terkait dengan dengan tagihan yang ada di RJI. Jadi kita uh, mengikuti polanya crossref ya. Crossref itu menagih membuat uh, invoice kepada RJI itu per tiga bulan sekali ya. Uh, apa namanya? 
bulan uh, April ya Maret itu akhir akhir Maret terus akhir Juni terus nanti akhir September ini ada nah uh, seperti itu jadi kita juga menagih ke Bapak Ibu sekalian itu di, di bulan-bulan itu makanya ketika ada uh, kita kita coba pasang uh, apa namanya uh, sistem deposit um, itu untuk menghindari agar Bapak Ibu tidak telat untuk membayar seperti itu nah uh, itu ya terus kita punya aplikasi namanya DOI by RJI itu aplikasi untuk memudahkan Bapak Ibu sekalian ketika mengurus DOI melalui RJI ya di sana ada informasi-informasi ketika uh, misal mau menambah deposit atau uh, uh, apa namanya melihat ya cek sudah berapa artikel atau sudah berapa konten yang diaktif DOI nya itu semuanya ada di situ gitu. jadi itu real time karena kita ngambil IPA dari uh, Crossref seperti itu. Unggah bukti bayar pun di situ Bapak Ibu tidak perlu lagi kirim email, langsung masuk ke aplikasi itu, unggah bukti bayar dengan cara klik invoice, terus konfirmasi, unggah bukti bayarnya di sana. Jadi semuanya ini self service ya. Jadi uh, Bapak Ibu uh, apa namanya? mandiri ya. Kita ajak untuk mandiri untuk uh, menggunakan aplikasi itu. Nah ini ada contoh um, apa namanya dari Universitas Muara Bungo. Ini informasi akun crossref-nya ada di sana. Terus itu ada kelihatan ya total number number of jurnal. Berarti ada tiga jurnal. Terus di sini ada total register DOI itu ada 88. Register DOI ini tidak tidak melulu artikel. Misal Bapak Ibu um, apa namanya? Uh, 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 meregistarkan uh, apa namanya yang lain konten-konten uh, yang lain itu juga bisa seperti itu. Nah di sini ada informasi juga yang kita bisa menyediakan uh, ruang untuk mengganti kontak person ya. Jadi bapak ibu misal yang urus DOI ganti uh, ya sudah silahkan diunggah SK SK yang baru di aplikasi itu. Jadi semuanya uh, satu pintu di aplikasi itu. Nah, saat ini ada pengembangan tahap kedua. Pengembangan ini nanti, um, apa namanya, ada beberapa hal pengembangan fitur-fitur lainnya. Salah satunya adalah pengembangan untuk, um, apa namanya, Bapak Ibu um, melakukan pembayaran secara mandiri. ya Selama ini itu kan uh, saldonya kepotong otomatis ya, ketika ada invoice dari kami, saldonya kepotong otomatis. Tapi untuk ke depan nanti akan ada pengembangan tahap kedua, itu Bapak-Ibu ketika dapat invoice itu harus membayar sendiri ya. Jadi tidak tidak dipotong otomatis seperti itu. Jadi seperti seperti apa namanya aplikasi-aplikasi pembayaran yang lain ketika ada tagihan listrik, Bapak-Ibu harus membayar. Nah, seperti itu contohnya. Bisa lewat, lewat OVO atau lewat dana itu kan harus harus kita yang klik tombol untuk membayar. Itu juga nanti di, di pengembangan tahap berikutnya seperti itu. Saya lewati ini forum diskusi DOI, Bapak Ibu buka forum.relawanjurnal.id. Nanti scroll ke bawah ada namanya Crossref ya. Nanti itu di ada banyak catatan-catatan di sana ya, terutama dari tim-tim teman-teman di RJI. Itu ada buat tutorial di sana atau di YouTube ya. Bapak Ibu bisa buka YouTube channelnya RJI ya nanti di sana juga uh, apa namanya ada uh, kita uh, dalam kita kumpulkan dalam satu playlist ya tentang tutorial DOI sudah sudah kumpul semua di sana. Uh, ini ini tampilan halaman depan uh, web DOI kami ya doi.relawanjurnal.id Nah, Bapak Ibu bisa ngecek itu di bagian search ya, itu dimasukkan aja nama ini ya, nama masing-masing e, kampusnya. Kalau semuanya namanya belum ada, coba ditanya dulu di dengan pimpinannya. Ini kampus kita sudah punya DOI belum gitu? Kalau belum segera diurus hari ini, diurus hari ini, hari Senin atau hari Selasa dilakukan pembayaran. Nanti Sabtu depan itu habis masanya. Jadi Sabtu depan adalah pendaftar yang yang berikutnya seperti itu ya. Nah silahkan ini di ini apa namanya dicek dulu di sini ya di tombol set ini nama kampus bapak ibu sekalian atau institusi jangan dimasukkan nama jurnal nanti tidak muncul 
uh, saran saya satu kampus itu satu DOI ya jangan jangan DOI-nya pecah-pecah itu terus bagaimana yang sudah terlanjur nih masing-masing fakultas nih sudah ada DOI-nya ya silakan nanti ngobrol dengan pimpinannya itu mau di merger atau tidak kalau tidak ya jalan masing-masing fakultas gitu kalau mau di merger nanti bapak ibu bisa uh, ngomong ke cross ref bahwa prefix ini, prefix ini, prefix ini, misal ada lima prefix itu, itu di merger jadi satu prefix ke prefix yang ini. Gitu. Nah itu nanti bisa. Terus alamat DW-nya berubah nggak? Nggak. Alamat uh, DW-nya nggak berubah, tapi nanti di ada updating ya. Nah silakan nanti update-nya ngomong ke cross ref. Saya kira itu, uh, ini kontak kalau mau kontak langsung ke cross ref, itu buka doi.crossref. Ya. Kalau mau kontak-kontak, terus ini, Nah ini kontak tim DOI-nya RJI ya, jadi Bapak Ibu bisa gabung di grup Telegram maupun bisa WA Bu Rini, ini untuk soal keuangan, deposit, pembayaran, atau yang lainnya yang berkaitan dengan uh, dana ya. Terus untuk yang teknik aktivasi DOI ada error, ada gagal, uh, pokoknya urusan yang error-error lah nanti dengan Mas Busro gitu, seperti itu. Nah, sementara kita juga ada grup Telegram, silahkan ngobrol di sana. Ini nanti link-nya, link materi ini saya share di uh, chat ya nanti. Uh, biar Bapak-Ibu bisa uh, menggunakan kapanpun. Saya kira demikian, Bu Lydia, selaku moderator, terima kasih banyak. Terima kasih banyak, saya sampaikan juga kepada Bapak-Ibu, serta annual meeting yang ketiga. Uh, mohon maaf apabila ada kata-kata saya yang salah. Saya akhiri, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih Pak Andri untuk penjelasannya. Kita buka berapa pertanyaan Pak Andri untuk sesi ya Pak Andri ini. Uh, uh, untuk tim yang lain <laughs> ada yang lain. Oh ya, oke. Okay. Yang, sudah... yang mau bertanya saya persilahkan untuk langsung saja di unmute mic-nya. Jadi nanti bisa langsung diskusi ya. Okay. Terus kemudian kalau ini yang masuk di saya pertanyaannya Memang ada beberapa ini Salah satunya adalah menanyakan Silahkan Maupun yang ada di Youtube ya nanti kita share juga Cuman memang untuk sertifikatnya ini ada biayanya Jadi kalau mengikuti acaranya gratis, Bapak Ibu bisa ikut acara dari awal sampai akhir. Lima serisnya semuanya boleh ikut. Tapi kalau menginginkan sertifikat untuk keperluan administrasi, silakan ada link di link itu bisa untuk diklik saja untuk exit tiket atau presensi kehadiran. Baik Bapak Ibu, sebelum saya ke Buri ini, saya buka beberapa pertanyaan mungkin ya bisa langsung dijawab nanti secara simultan. Karena di sini saya lihat juga ada beberapa orang yang sudah ada di sini, ada Pak Eko juga sudah masuk, teman-teman dari tim DOI juga sudah masuk selain Bu Riri. Baik Bapak-Ibu, apakah ada pertanyaan ini? Oh ya Pak Puput ya, ini... Ya. <laughs> Silakan Pak Puput bisa... Sudah, Aduh. tapi saya belum bisa mendengar suaranya Pak Puput ini. Oh, oh iya, 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 iya. Tes, halo. Ah, sudah terdengar, oh, Bapak, iya. silakan. Terima kasih, Bu Zuliana. <tuh> uh, saya ingin bertanya uh, terkait dengan uh, apa yang tadi sudah disampaikan oleh Bapak Ketua. Uh, oh, jadi belum lama ini kami mengupdate. SK pengurus uh, yang bertanggung jawab dalam DOI, Ibu. Uh, kemudian kami sudah update dan sudah dapat verifikasi di email uh, kami dari Unindra. Uh, kebetulan di sini ada Pak Sarbolo juga. Nah itu uh, saya mau konfirmasi terkait dengan hal tersebut. Apakah uh, kami menunggu akun-akun baru dari uh, sistemnya doi.relawanjournal.id atau kami register? register di apa uh, di web tersebut atau tinggal menunggu uh, username dan password 
uh, dari administrator karena uh, apa kontaknya kan yang lama ya bu ya username-nya yang lama passwordnya yang lama juga ya, oh, ya. gitu uh, mungkin itu aja bu terima kasih baik pertanyaan selanjutnya mungkin ada bapak ibu kalau tidak ada uh, saya persilahkan bu Rini untuk menjawab bu Rini uh, sebentar tadi putus-putus sinyalnya jadi ini bapaknya nanyain Registrasinya, Ibu. Ya, dengan traffic Jadi, berapa bisa di chat kan? Registrasinya bisa ke, di share link-nya nanti di chat ya. Oke, siap, siap. Setelah itu, apa prosesnya? Baik, uh, <laughs> jadi kalau yang user lama, itu prosesnya adalah melalui reset password. Karena untuk aplikasi doi.relawan.journal.id itu, Uh, belum ada passwordnya semua untuk user yang lama yang sudah bergabung dengan RJI. Jadi untuk mendapatkan password yang baru itu caranya adalah reset password. Nanti saya share untuk linknya di chat ya. Uh, mohon izin bu. Jadi uh, apa namanya uh, kami sudah bisa membuka di doi dokter relawan jurnal ID uh, yeah. karena ya. Karena uh, dan sudah kami bisa cek ini juga kan apa namanya tagihan dan lain sebagainya. Saat ini kan tagihan Betul. sudah nol nol rupiah. Betul. Cuma memang oh, itu masih atas nama orang lain gitu ya dalam hal oh, ini. Oh begitu ya ini, pak ya. Jadi ada pergantian pengurus. Pergantian ya? pengurus betul sekali dan kebetulan hari ini uh, pada SK yang baru kan atas nama saya gitu ya. Oh iya siap. Oh, begitu. Dan mungkin nanti bisa japri saya pak untuk yang pengurus yang baru. Mm -hmm. Nanti saya share nomor ya saya di chat. Oh baik baik. Terima kasih Ibu sebelumnya. Baik Pak. Baik, terima kasih Bu Rini jawabannya. Ya, uh, saya membuka pertanyaan berikutnya mungkin dari teman-teman yang lain silahkan. Pak Zulid bisa Mbak Zulid? Iya, uh, saya belum kelihatan ini. Yang mana Bapak? Saya nggak ada videonya. Mana? Oh iya Pak Sudikno ya. ini ya. Oke, okay. ya. silakan Bapak. Ya, anu ada kameranya maaf uh, ini mau konfirmasi saja memang memang uh, terima kasih ya sudah sudah didampingi sama RCI cukup lama untuk jurnal saya di Indonesia uh, untuk untuk kedepannya ini karena memang uh, terkait dengan deposit ini kan uh, kadang karena saya kan uh, walaupun di Gisi Indonesia untuk keuangan ini kan harus uh, mengusulkan lebih dahulu sehingga mohon kiranya nanti walaupun uh, gimana kondisinya kalau kalau bisa itu uh, di WA dulu misalkan sebelum sebulan itu uh, misalkan jatuh tempo katakanlah depositnya uh, kurang atau minim gitu ya itu mohon untuk diinformasikan sehingga uh, bisa saling inilah saling mengingatkan gitu kadang-kadang uh, hal ini kita lupa gitu jadi mohon untuk diingatkan aja lewat WA kontak persen yang ada sehingga uh, kewajiban kami selaku uh, redaksi jurnal itu uh, bisa bisa terpenuhi gitu terima kasih atas uh, bantuan dari RC ini Baik, terima kasih Bapak pertanyaannya. Langsung dijawab aja kali ya, Bu Dini. Oh, iya, ya, ya. Uh, baik, uh, terima kasih Pak untuk pertanyaannya. Jadi, uh, untuk deposit sebetulnya bisa diperkirakan Pak biayanya. Karena untuk uh, biaya di pengurusan DOI di RJI itu untuk annual fee kan 500 ribu ya. Kemudian untuk konten <coughs> itu juga bisa diperhitungkan. Uh, Misalkan dalam satu tahun itu kita akan mengaktifasi 100 artikel. Nah, untuk artikel, uh, biayanya sudah jelas untuk current year, untuk tahun ini yang tadi sudah dijelaskan oleh Pak Andri juga, itu adalah satu dolar. Jadi diperkirakan misalkan dolarnya itu adalah 15000 atau 16000 seperti itu. Kemudian kira-kira dalam uh, tahun satu tahun ke depan itu, ada nggak artikel yang termasuk dalam back year? Jadi dua tahun yang ke belakang itu ya. Nah, itu 0,15 dolar. Nah, jadi seperti itu. Mungkin nanti juga uh, pengingat juga nanti kita 
uh, buat message ya di aplikasi DOI tersebut. Mungkin itu. Ya, terima kasih Mbak Rini. Iya ya, Pak, sami-sami. Memang penjelasan mengenai oh, deposit ini deposit butuh saya. lebih panjang ya penjelasannya mungkin Bapak Ibu. Uh, ada yang mau, mau ditanyakan lagi? Mungkin dari ini Pak Abdul Mujid ya sudah raise hand ya. Silakan Bapak di unmute. <tuh> Uh, saya pengelola jurnal yang baru, ini baru tahun kedua uh, di, insti, uh, Universitas saya adalah Universitas Muslim Nusantara Al-Wasliyah Medan uh, Saya cek di, di uh, DOI BRJI, di situ sudah terdaftar gitu Jadi, Tapi di situ jumlah total uh, jurnal yang, di, yang didaftarkan itu baru empat Jadi kemungkinan jurnal saya itu yang saya kelola itu belum terdaftar Itu seperti apa ya teknisnya nanti itu ya Oh ya baik Pak, uh, mungkin langsung saya jawab saja. Uh, itu pengelolaannya ya, berarti universitas ya Pak ya? Iya, di sini Universitas Muslim Nusantara Australia pengajuannya ya. di situ. Saya lihat untuk ya, DOI, ya, berdasarkan. Uh, mungkin nanti Bapak bisa menghubungi pengelola DOI yang ada di universitas. Jadi nanti di cover ya, ya. apa namanya secara gabungan Pak di sana. Oh begitu. Jadi saya pengajuannya ya. langsung dari universitas itu aja ya untuk uh, Jadi semua nanti jurnal. Gabung jadi jadi satu. Siap, siap, siap. Jadi itu ya. kalau untuk doi berarti ini kan uh, dua tahun ya Ibu. Jadi saya setahun dua, dua kali publish. Jadi ada empat ya. edisi, ada empat nomor. Itu berarti empat empatnya kita uh, ajukan gitu ya untuk ya, tujuan akreditasi nanti gitu. Iya. Uh, ya. Siap, siap. Ya. Oke. Okay. Baik, terima kasih Ibu. Itu aja mungkin sana. Ya. Jadi nanti saya tinggal koordinasi dengan. Iya, nanti uh, bisa chat saya gitu. juga Pak ya. Oh, baik Ibu, terima kasih banyak. Ya, Bu ini mungkin bisa share. Oh, sudah share ya Bu ini ya. Nomornya oh, sudah, ada di sudah saya share untuk chatnya ya. Nah ini ada yang sudah resen ini sebelum saya ke pertanyaan yang ada di chat ada yang sudah resen ini Bu ini Bu Novita tadi kalau nggak salah. Ya Bu Novita Kamarudin. Uh, ya silakan Bu Novita. Ya terima kasih. Uh, uh, kami sudah join uh, dengan DOI RJI. Uh, kemarin itu ada informasi ke email bahwa harus meregistrasi ulang untuk uh, apa ya proses baru ya hmm. tapi saya cek di situ uh, bahwa saldo kita masih ada cuman kalau kita pengen tahu bahwa untuk karena kan kami terbit itu setahun empat kali ya tadi saya coba klik uh, beberapa item yang di uh, apa yang di proses akun kami ini tapi saya nggak bisa ngelihat berapa artikel tahun ini harus kami bayar gitu sehingga bisa kami kalau mau bayar lagi depositnya berapa minimal atau bagaimana ya itu aja terima kasih oh, iya. uh, bisa dibantu nomor prefiknya bu bisa dicatkan bisa dibantu nomor prefiknya bisa dicatkan bu Bu Novita mungkin perlu waktu ya untuk mencari nomor prefix institusinya. Iya. Ya. Atau Nom emailnya juga boleh, email yang terdaftar di aplikasi. Oh, sebentar. Email ya. Iya. Baik, sambil menunggu Bu Novita share menge-share uh, prefix-nya, saya ke pertanyaan yang lain ya Bu Rini ya. Ini ada boleh. cukup lumayan ada beberapa ini yang sudah yang sudah bertanya. Untuk pindah prefix DOI ada empat opsi dari Crossref. Salah satunya melalui Enhanced Transfer Alerting Service. Terus gimana ini menggunakan etas tersebut? Selain Budi, di sini ada tim DOI lain nggak? Nggak tahu ya. <laughs> Pak Busra mungkin ada. Untuk pertanyaan ini, mungkin, ini apa, mungkin, Pak, mungkin apa, Pak Busro atau Pak Andri ya yang untuk etas iya, ya. Pak Andri ini lagi sudah ya, meninggalkan ada ruang. Agenda. Iya, jadi ini kami simpan ya Bu. Nanti ini Bapak atau Ibu ini soalnya tulisannya Fakultas Pertanian, jadi tidak tahu di Bapak atau Ibu nanti bisa. Ini saya simpan pertanyaannya nanti staf akan menyimpan pertanyaannya kita jawab melalui channel YouTube atau kita lempar ke forum. Baik, kamu pertanyaan selanjutnya. Saya ingin bertanya jika sudah mendaftarkan jurnal kita untuk mendapatkan DOI, apakah boleh jurnal tahun sekarang saja yang kita buat DOI-nya? Sedangkan oh, yang boleh. tahun lalu, apakah yang tahun lalu juga harus dibuat? Ini ini pertanyaannya untuk 
artikelnya atau gimana ya? Mungkin Pak Muammar Rinaldi bisa membuka mic-nya untuk berdiskusi lang- secara langsung. Silakan Pak. Pak Muammar. Pak Muammar Rinaldi bisa dengar suara saya ya? Bisa silakan menanyakan langsung. Ini maksudnya jurnal Mungkin apa? Mikrofonnya nggak aktif ya? Oh gitu. Apakah boleh jurnal tahun sekarang kita buat doinya atau tahun lalu juga harus dibuat? E, kalau itu sih kebijakan dari masing-masing pengolah jurnal ya bisa saja itu hanya artikel-artikel di jurnal yang sekarang saja atau tahun ini saja yang diaktifkan. Hanya saja penulis sekarang juga meminta e, semua artikelnya terdoikan ya untuk yang apa namanya e, kepentingan dari para penulis atau pengajar dari dosen masing-masing. Universitas di situ. Jadi ini uh, singkatnya ini harus terdoikan semua ya, berarti Bu Rini ya. Uh, ya kan kalau lagi. diaktifkan yang sekarang yang back issue otomatis sudah terdoi juga. Oh uh, enggak, kalau belum diaktifkan di OI-nya uh, otomatis ya belum ada ya. Jadi untuk yang back year itu juga misalkan mau diaktifkan di OI-nya juga bisa. Nanti terkenanya adalah 0,15 dolar satu artikelnya, satu DOI. Jadi beda harga dengan yang sekarang? Ya, kalau yang current year itu satu dolar. Oke, oke. Ke pertanyaan selanjutnya. Belum ada yang raise hand lagi. Kami sudah punya dari Ibu Sari Ramadhani. Kami sudah punya ada Dori. Yang itu. Ada dari ya? Fakultas Pertanian itu. Oh tadi, saya terlanjur nih Bu Sari Ramadhani, kami sudah punya doi untuk satu artikel jurnal penelitian kalau punya jurnal baru, gimana mendapatkan doinya, prefixnya sama Bu, tinggal di secara teknis di buat saja ya Bu Rini, ya, ya diaktifkan betul. saja, jadi ya. kalau di satu institusi nggak masalah itu ya ya, satu prefix itu bisa untuk banyak jurnal yang banyak ada di jurnal. institusi ya, gak ada ma- jumlah maksimalnya ya Bu Rini ya, gak ada, jadi maksimal untuk pun juga bisa jurnal gitu. oh. nah, nah. Ya, berarti yang dihitung itu adalah juga bisa. Ya, semuanya yang itu bisa institusinya yang dihitung ya berarti Betul. satu Prefiknya. institusi, prefixnya ya. okay. satu institusi seperti yang dianjurkan oleh Pak Andri tadi, satu institusi sebaiknya memiliki Betul. hanya satu prefix doi saja Betul. baik Saya ke yang raise hand dari Fakultas Pertanian tadi ya. Silakan Bapak atau Ibu. Bapak. Oh ya, silakan Bapak Fakultas. <laughs> dari Fakultas Pertanian UHO. Kami di sini di UHO itu punya doi. Namun kemarin untuk mempermudah pengurusan kami juga mengurus untuk fakultas di, di bawah jurusan gitu. Sekarang supaya mempermudah pengelolaan doinya berencana untuk memindahkan doi yang dari institusi eh, apa doi halo pak ya, ada empat suaranya pot. hilang putus putus ya iya soalnya putus putus bapak Hanya, kita coba coba buka atas tadi ya kedengaran ya ya sudah kedengaran bapak silakan Terima kasih ya. Kami di universitas itu ada doi institusi kedengaran ya? Kedengaran pak. Iya. Dan e, karena banyaknya jurnal yang dikelola oleh institusi, ya. kami bi- hanya menurut prosedur pada empat opsi selalunya melalui etas itu. Hanya kami nggak tahu bagaimana menggunakan etas itu. Mungkin nanti mohon dipandu lah dari LJ. Baik Bapak, tadi ya. uh, kebetulan nih tim teknisnya oh, tim teknisnya masih belum hadir lagi, nanti untuk pertanyaan etas ini akan kita jawab bisa Baik. minggu depan dan bisa join lagi ya Pak ya Baik, terima kasih Pak Saya simpan nanti pertanyaannya Baik, uh, ada lagi yang bertanya di chat box uh, dari Pak Adi Parman oh, Sebentar, ini ada yang uh, menanyakan tentang deposit tagihannya satu setengah juta tapi satu juta aja boleh nggak di diskon burini ada yang minta diskon burini 
Halo Budi nih. Iya, yeah, halo halo halo. Iya. Yeah. Lupa lupa main chat. <laughs> oh, sudah ngomong. Uh, uh, iya, yeah, kemarin memang apa namanya kesepakatan di tim COA itu kenapa kok dibuat satu setengah juta karena untuk uh, menghindari minus minus yang seperti kemarin terjadi itu. Oleh karena itu uh, untuk minimal depositnya memang satu setengah juta di situ. Oke. Okay. Jadi itu sudah sudah ini ya. Iya. Mungkin nanti Sudah ada kebijakan yang lain mungkin nanti. Okay. Karena satu setengah itu kan depositnya sebetulnya satu juta ya. Karena 500.000 ribu kan untuk annual fee. Kalau di pengurusan cross ref di RCI kan memang annual fee hanya 500.000 ribu. Sedangkan kalau misalkan daerah ke cross ref itu biaya annual fee-nya 275 dolar. Sekitar 4 juta sekian ya. Baik-baik. Hmm. Baik Bapak Ibu, uh... Ini Rahel sudah bersama kita, sesuai jadwal beliau akan mempresentasi jam 2, jadi ini saya masih ada kesempatan untuk beberapa penanya. Untuk Ibu Novita sudah dijawab di chat box ya Ibu, bahwa terakhir login 12 September 2020, bisa lanjut chat dengan Bu Rini. Terus kemudian tadi ada yang bertanya lagi dari Pak Adi Parman, artikel kami sudah langganan doi. Apakah pembayarannya harus full tiap edisi atau satu kali full per tahun? Jurnal kami dua kali dalam satu tahun. Harga rupiah standarnya DOI berapa ya Bapak-Ibu? Oh ini tadi yang dari UHO tadi ya? Tapi boleh sih dijelaskan kembali Bu Rini kalau pertanyaannya semacam ini bagaimana? Ya, Apakah kalau... pembayarannya harus full tiap edisi atau bagaimana? Uh, kalau sistemnya kita kan memang deposit ya, jadi... tagihan dari crossref itu datang ke kita tiga bulan sekali. Jika ada prefix uh, dari universitas tersebut, misalkan tadi dari UHO ya, dari UHO muncul, otomatis nanti kita mengurangkan dari deposit yang sudah dibayarkan oleh institusi tersebut. Nah, untuk satu uh, dolar untuk kursnya itu kita menggunakan yang ada di PayPal untuk kursnya. Jadi sewaktu misalkan nanti kita ini September nanti pasti ada tagihan dari cross-ref lagi, nanti uh, kita menyesuaikan kurs pada saat kita bayar. Nah, kursnya itu berapa? Misalkan uh, 16.100 atau 15.400. Nah, kita menyesuaikan tersebut. Jadi menyesuaikan ya? Iya. Yeah. Hmm. Oke. Okay. Ini ada pertanyaan lagi nih dari Pak Siswadi. Kampus kami belum punya DOI. Ada biayanya waktu pendaftaran pertama, apakah mesti deposit? Nah, ini karena bebas annual fee ya untuk yang ikut hari ini. Jadi yeah. prosesnya tinggal daftar aja, nanti yang akan didepositkan adalah sejumlah berapa, Bu Dini? Depositnya minimal satu setengah. Satu setengah. Jadi deposit itu tidak hilang, artinya misalkan tahun ini kan tinggal beberapa bulan ya. Jadi misalkan hmm. masih nanti diakumulasi di tahun berikutnya. Begitu, Jadi, ya. Jadi satu setengah itu buat artikel itu berarti untuk berapa artikel kira-kira? Mungkin pertanyaan uh, ini. Kira-kira kalau 15.000 ribu ya berarti berapa ya? Coba kalkulator. <laughs> Baik, kalau itu biar dihitung sendiri. Jadi satu setengah ini. juta dibagi 15.000 ribu. <laughs> satu, Bapak Ibu nanti bisa hitung sendiri ya. Oke, okay, tampaknya sudah tidak ada pertanyaan nih. Kita sambut Rahel dulu. Uh, siang, Bu. Iya, ya, Pak Teguh Ari. Silahkan, Pak. Uh, mau tanya ini. Saya kan sudah mendaftar lewat RCI, kemudian saya ikut di forumnya, itu kan ada pendaftaran untuk uh, plagiasi item tiket. Ya. Itu saya juga sudah dapat. Itu uh, kalau nggak salah kan untuk 100 pertama kan gratis. Itu kalau untuk yang setelahnya itu bayar berapa Bu ya? Yang item tiket untuk turnitin itu. Baik, Bu Rini bisa di... Apakah item tiket ya Pak? Ya, Bukan tiket 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 saya belum dapat. terlalu... Takutnya nanti saya kita kita pakai sering temen, uh, sering-sering terus nanti tagihannya banyak itu loh Oh takutnya melebihi tagihan begitu ya? Iya makanya itu kan okay. setahu saya 100 pertama kan gratis. Nah setelah yeah. itu berapa itu yang saya masih ragu takutnya oh, dimana? Iya, iya. Mbak Uni ada nggak Mbak Uni? Lembung Lampir, gitu ini. jawabannya kan nggak enak tagihannya sekarang. Baik baik. Kita. Saya tanyakan ke staf bagian administrasinya ya Mbak Uni atau Pas Chandra tolong dipantau. Ada pertanyaan mengenai jumlah item tiket maksimal itu berapa? Nanti kalau ya. sudah ada jawaban kita chat ya Bapak ya. Oh, ya. 
Baik, kalau ini untuk nah, yang ya. mungkin saya tambahi Mbak Rit. jadi Silakan, untuk Bu, yang item tiket itu kan memang ada tagihan dari apa namanya sana ya nah nanti kita juga mengurangi dari deposit dari apa namanya universitas tersebut nanti di dalam invoice-nya untuk resipnya juga nanti bunyinya adalah item tiket untuk pembayaran similarity check apa similarity check bukan deposit lagi ya, ya. itu kira-kira berapa bu per per Baik. itu yang saya nah pegang. itu kalau per itemnya tadi kelihatannya Pak Andri juga sudah menjelaskan ya tadi berapa ya sudah datang kayaknya ibu tadi oh baik nanti ya, kita ah. cari saya kalau materinya ada ya. di WeChat Pak tadi oh di WeChat ya ya coba di ya. share lagi ya untuk staf administrasinya untuk bagian pembayaran ini kita sapa Rahel dulu ya Hi Rahel can you unmute your mic Hi Rahel yes Yeah, can you hear okay. me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very clear. Good. Okay. Hi, Rahel. How are you? This is our second time meet virtually in Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I do exist in real life as well. But yeah. everything is on Zoom now, right? Yeah. Especially in my country, it's there are so many red zones here. So we can go anywhere. And the capital will close at 14 September. So uh, let's just have our productivity with our virtual meeting today. So you will be here to explain about um, updates in Crossref, right, Rahel? Yes. Yeah. And unfortunately, I would like to introduce you further, but I think it will be better if you introduce yourself. And then we will have... Uh, in a discussion mode with dual, with bilingual mode. So after you explain, and then I will have a sum of sum up or summary and explaining. And later on, when the participants needs the question to ask, uh, they can ask in Indonesia. But I will translate it to you in English, like before. So um, our discussion will be in a slow motions. <laughs> Is that okay, right, Rahel? No, that's that's perfect. That's very helpful. Thank you. Okay, and I really hope that uh, you ex uh, you will explain in also in a slow motion. So because uh, our particip our language is Indonesia, because English is our not our second, but it's foreign language. So most of us not really uh, comprehend with the English. Okay, then I don't want to get long. Because I really wait for your explanation about the metadata manager updates and the things related with the cross ref. Okay, Rahel, you can use your green button yeah. below to share screen and start your explanation. Time is yours, Rahel. Thank you. So if I, I will talk slowly. And yeah. If um, if I'm talking too quickly, then, yeah, yeah. then let me know. Um, yeah, yeah. I was going to talk first about some updates from Crossref and then do a section on Metadata Manager after that. Okay. Is that okay? Oh, that's okay. That's fine. I will pull the break if, and, I, and I, I will tell you if you talk uh, too fast. Okay, perfectly. Perfect. So... Yeah. This. So you can you can see my screen. Yeah, it's clear. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me uh, give an opening for the participants in Indonesia. Bapak Ibu, silakan didengarkan. Nanti kalau ada pertanyaan yang berkaitan dengan materi yang dijelaskan oleh Rachel, silakan langsung ditanyakan di chat box. Atau kalau ada yang kurang jelas juga boleh ditanyakan di chat box. Kalau misalnya tidak paham atau uh, ingin penjelasan lebih lanjut juga silakan. Uh, dalam bahasa Indonesia tidak apa-apa, nanti akan saya translate dalam bahasa Inggris. Oke, okay, Rahel, I've already told the participants to ask in chat box while you are presenting. Cool. Oke. Okay. Great. Um, So thank you for the um, for the invitation and also the the introduction. 
I'm Rachel and I'm Head of Community Outreach at Crossref and I wanted to so to do two things today one to give an update on Crossref services and what we're seeing at Crossref and hopefully some useful information for you and then I'm going to take some time to to talk through our um, our, our metadata manager tool um, after this. At Crossref, um, we're trying to make research outputs easy to find, cite, link and assess. And we work with over 16,000 member organisations um, throughout the world. And we report to a board that's made up of our of our members. Um, for us, um, our members are growing a lot. We're seeing a lot of new organisations come to to participate in Crossref because they want to register their research with us, and they want to make it discoverable via lots of different tools, services, and databases. Um, we thought I thought it was important to highlight um, the the growth that we are seeing um, in the last two years. Um, so over seven thousand new members, but it's significant that so many of our new members are coming from Indonesia, and they're working with sponsoring organisations like Relawan Journal Indonesia. And it's 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 really helping to um, it's really helping us and helping the research to be to be able to be to be found and and collected with information from lots of other global journal publishers. The important thing about the the information that you register with Crossref when you're assigning DOIs is the fact that it's not just to get a DOI for, for your articles, for your journals. When you register your articles or conference proceedings or anything else with Crossref, we make it discoverable for lots of other tools and services. So Crossref information is used in a lot of library systems to help researchers find, accurately find the research that they're interested in. It can be used in different search databases because DOIs help to accurately identify content. And it can also be used in, um, in tools that are providing metrics. So looking at citation information, um, citation information and links to other types of research. So once you register information with us, then it goes to lots of different places and is used in lots of different research without you having to do anything else. Some of the interesting things that we're seeing um, in Crossref at the moment are um, we're seeing a big growth in, um, in preprints being registered with us. Um, and I know that there is sort of an, an Indonesian um, preprint server. With the, um, with the coronavirus and we're we're still we're still seeing the effects in the UK. Um, we're seeing a lot of researchers posting preprints on COVID because they want to make the research available early. So it's it's a type of content that we are seeing being registered with us a lot in Crossref. The interesting things is that with Crossref, what we're also doing with preprints 
is that when an article is published that's related to a preprint, our members will connect the preprint in the metadata to the published article. So I looked today and I could see that we have over 100,000 preprints registered in Crossref that are then connected to a published article. So I think that this is something that, um, that has been changing dramatically over the past couple of years and is helping research get shared and, um, and disseminated more quickly to, to people who need it. In terms of news and new developments on, our, on the Crossref side, um, I heard in the last discussions that um, there was some conversation around similarity check. And similarity check is, um, is a service that um, is trying to help editors prevent plagiarism. I know that um, I know that some members who work with um, who work with Relawan Journal Indonesia use Similarity Check, um, and what the service does is it it gives access to Turnitin's text comparison tool called Authenticate, and this lets editors compare their own manuscripts against a large database of full text academic content from lots of different publishers, academic institutions and databases. As you know, there are several plagiarism screening tools available, um, including Turnitin, um, which is used in a lot of academic institutions. Authenticate, which we make available to Similarity Check members is unique because Similarity Check members have a reduced fee for the use of Authenticate because they contribute their own content into Turnitin's database of full text literature. So that means as more publishers participate in Similarity Check, the size of the database that content is checked against grows as well. More content means greater security for editors who want to determine if a manuscript is original or not. If a journal is, um, is a similarity check member, um, Um, the, they can upload a document to Authenticate and manuscripts can be submitted in a number of formats, Word, text, PDF. And users can then compare the original and the database documents side by side. And the editor can make a decision about whether the similarity detected is legitimate or if it needs further investigation. People always ask, is there a percentage or a similarity score that says this paper contains plagiarism? And unfortunately, it, it's not as simple as that. We still need editors to take a look and make a decision about whether the, the text is being used for a legitimate reason, if it's being referenced, or if further investigation is required. The reason I wanted to talk about Similarity Check today is that we are going, in the next few months, we will see some improvements to the service for, um, for participants. And this is based on what people have been asking us and asking Turnitin because um, they want to improve the service. So what, what users will start to see later this year is an improved document viewer that makes 
PDF searchable and accessible. The design will be responsive for use on different screen sizes and all of the functionality will be streamlined into um, a couple of views to make it easier for editors to interpret the report. The other thing that we see is um, it's quest are questions about what to exclude. So sometimes it can be helpful to see the report without a materials or methods section because that can be replicated elsewhere or without references or items which specifically have been quoted. So smarter citation detection will now identify probable citations in line and in reference sections. So the aim of this is that the report will only highlight sections of text that it can find elsewhere but have not been cited by the author. Other questions that we get from members are they want to make sure that their content is being indexed in the database on an ongoing basis so that um, so that they don't assume that that the paper that they have uploaded is being checked against content that hasn't been indexed yet. You don't want to assume or think that a paper is um, is original just because another paper very similar to it has not been indexed yet. So we need to show members what has been indexed and what isn't so that they can fix any issues. Because the majority of, um, because the, the, the members that work with Relawan in Journal Indonesia, because you mostly use OJS, this means that there are there are very few issues with indexing your content. I asked my colleague earlier this week and she said, like, no problems, all, all very good. Um, this will, the new improvements will also contain um, a new API so that there can be better integration with manuscript submission systems and tools like OJS so that it's easier for, for editors to use this service as part of their, their normal workflows. And we're also going to Im increase the maximum number of pages and the file size per document that members can check. So up to 800 pages or 200 megabytes. So if um, each member who signs up to Similarity Check every year they can check 100 documents with no charge. So now up to 800 pages being uploaded at once, that counts as one document. So it makes it easier for, um, for members who are uploading large documents, for example, like a book, not to have to be charged multiple times to check one piece. The other thing that, um, that's happened this year is that, um, like Crossref, um, DOIJ, um, the Directory of Open Access Journals, has seen a large um, growth in indexing, um, indexing publications from, from Indonesia. And they've made changes to, to DOIJ to try to make it easier to send metadata in to DOIJ for, for journals who participate. Very simply, they've allowed organisations who are submitting metadata to DOIJ to do that using Crossref XML so that you don't have to use specific DOIJ XML to submit you can upload the Crossref metadata and DOIJ will convert it and use it to their purposes. So it's saving time, trying to save time and work 
for, for editors because this is a big request they get. And I'm speaking with um, DOIJ and some of their some of their journal, um, their their journal managers and their their staff next month to see about other ways that we can collaborate with them. So again, you know, if you have ideas or things that would be helpful, then then please let us know. The other organisation that we um, that we collaborate a lot with is um, is PKP, um, who who run Open Journal Systems. At the end of last year, um, we announced that we were um, that we had that we'd signed an agreement with with PKP to be one of their strategic partners which basically helps will help us work together more closely in future. We are in the the final stages of signing off some work with PKP to make the the integration and the the plugins for Crossref in OJS to make those better. Work will start in the next month to try to simplify general DOI management in, in OJS and to simplify the Crossref registration status and management. So I know that sometimes maybe OJS will say that um, the content has been registered with Crossref or maybe there's been an error and sometimes it isn't clear if thing if your DOI registrations have succeeded or if they have failed. So we need to we need to make it easier to understand so that journals don't end up registering DOIs twice or registering incorrect information or thinking that content has been registered when it hasn't. So that will work to make that easier. We'll also add the funding data and the reference linking plugins into the main Crossref plugin. So there is a plugin to register references with Crossref in OJS and one to contribute information on who has funded the research. Both of these fields are really useful information, but because the plugins sit in separate places in OJS, it can be hard for, hard for members to find and use those consistently. So we want to consolidate those so that there's one place to do all of the Crossref stuff. The next stages of this work with PKP will happen in early 2021. And that will include a Crossref supported Cited By plugin. So Cited By is a service which lets editors know which other research has gone on to cite a specific article. So we'll help we'll help OJS have a supported cited by plugin. And they will also work on a supported plugin for the for the Crossmark service. So Crossmark is a button that when clicked on will let um, will let anyone know if a piece of content is up to date, if it's been corrected, or if it's been retracted. Again, this information is really useful and we wanted to encourage members to be able to do it. We used to charge an additional fee for the Crossmark service, um, but we removed that starting in January 2020. So if you register Crossmark metadata 
with Crossref, there's no additional charge to do that anymore because we want people to do this. But we also know that because of the technical steps, having an OJS plugin will definitely help with organisations being able to do this. As I mentioned, um, as well as DOI deposits, the most recent version of OJS, starting with 3.1.2, includes these plugins. Reference linking uses the Crossref API to check against plain text references and locate possible DOIs for articles. The plugin will also allow the display of reference lists on the article landing page in OJS. The funding plugin uses our Crossref funder registry and our API to check against existing funding, funding agencies. And the plugin will include funding information in your Crossref DOI deposits. More and more, we see that funders are wanting to report on the, the research that has been published as a direct result of research that they funded. So this can help them do that without having to ask researchers or grantees to provide that information manually. And finally, the Authenticate plugin submits manuscripts to turn it in, but you will need to log into your account to do that. The results don't get displayed in, in OJS. Z, um, PKP sent me um, this slide, um, and the reason that I'm talking about OJS a lot is that by their reckoning, Indonesia is the largest user of OJS, um, with, near, with over 2,000 journals publishing content that they could see in, in 2019. So we at Crossref, we really understand the importance of supporting OJS and working closely with PKP so that we can make it easier for journals to participate in, in Crossref services. Um, another new, I guess another new thing that we're, we're working hard on at Crossref is, um, is what's called ROAR or the Research Organisation Registry. Increasingly, um, it's really important to be able to have the affiliation of the researcher or the institution that they are based at collected alongside the research that they publish. And we, along with some other organizations, Datasite, California Digital Library, are supporting an initiative called ROAR, which is a list of affiliations. So research centers, universities, companies who can be, um, that authors can be associated with. And this will mean that a unique identifier can be associated with, um, with different institutions. And this can be submitted to Crossref alongside other publication information. So the institutions, publishers, journals, and anyone else will be able to see which institutions are, are publishing which research. Um, ROAR was launched in 2019 and it already has a list of um, 98,000 institutions. Um, so I had a look for, for some examples in, in Indonesia yesterday. So you can see that some um, that the Indonesian institutions are already listed in ROAR. 
they're connected to other identifiers um, so that they can um, so that they can be interoperable. And Roar also has an open API. Roar is free to use. There is, and the information is all openly available. So it's um, it's something that we're 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 going to start to use in Crossref soon. So if you're submitting article metadata to us, you'll be able to add the author's affiliation affiliation information using Roar. Um, this is a, a poster um, from Roar that they're going to, to present at the OASPA conference soon. And this is trying to kind of explain what, what Roar is trying to do. I said it's free and it's openly available and you can go and look at Roar now. But as you know, institutions can have very many names or similar names, or the name of the journal, the, the institution in English plus in, um, in the local language. And that can make it be hard to identify all research associated with a specific institution. So connecting institution names with an identifier will help the information be collected and used in an effective way. Said it's it's open and it's non non commercial, and it's specifically focused on affiliations, so matching researchers with the organisation that they come from. In the next few months we'll start to collect that in the Crossref metadata. And because an API is openly available, this will let Roar be integrated wherever affiliations are collected. So manuscript submission systems and other, other tools will be able to collect institutional affiliation connect it to Aurora ID and send that to Crossref. As I said, we will support the collection of Roar in the Crossref schema in the next few months. Um, and on our website, we have a blog from a couple of weeks ago, which goes into more detail about how publishers can work with Roar. There's also some work going on for an OJS plugin that will support Roar and the collection of affiliation information for, um, for OJS. I'll share these slides, but there is a ticket open for an OJS plugin for Roar, um, which is collecting information on what editors, um, what editors and journals need this to do. And I know that there's an open question in that about collecting, um, sort of collecting multiple institutions and multilingual journal names, um, or sorry, institution names. So if it's something that you have strong feelings about or experience working with, then, then please go in and, and, and share your comments. But development work on that is starting soon so that this information can be collected in OJS and sent to Crossref. Some other things, um, we, have a, um, we have a new education curriculum um, in place of our old um, support documents. So we're trying to provide better and more accessible information for, um, for our members to use. Um, all of services, different content types, 
and how you can how you can update your metadata or um, or fix fix any errors that happen. Um, we're conscious that the information is only available in English at this point, so we're we're looking at ways that we can support providing this information in in lots of different languages. And the other thing to highlight, um, this was released maybe like five days after um, five days after I last did um, did a webinar for for RJI. Um, but we also provided a free public data file of over one hundred and twelve million cross ref records to help with people. Um, to help people collect data that might be related to, to COVID-19. The information related, um, the information registered with by Crossref members is always openly available via our APIs. But we thought that doing this would make it even easier for researchers to be able to access and use this information. And it's something that we will be keen to do on an annual basis um, from now on um, to help it make it easier for people to use this information and to, share, to save them to save them time um, and make it easier. And I think um, the the last points that I want to make are that. We want to hear from you too. We're we're not just providing a service. Um, we're a membership organisation, and we know that there are things that our um, that our communities need. As I mentioned, multilingual materials on Crossref is something that we know is is really missing on our side, and we do want to work on those. Um, and we've had a lot of feedback on that. The other thing that we did this year is that we've um, we've launched the um, a Crossref Community Forum, which is an open online space for members where they can start a discussion or get a question answered by the Crossref team or another Crossref member. We find that um, a lot of our a lot of our members in Brazil are using this to discuss things in Brazilian Portuguese or to discuss things with others working in similar settings. Um, for example, organizations working with OJS. It can help share tips and advice and help people hear about upcoming news from Crossref and the industry more, more widely. And we also want to use it to provide scope for participation in beta testing or for other ways for our members to contribute to developments at Crossref and to provide feedback. And the other thing that a few other things that are that are in the pipeline are that we we want to build out um, a, a Crossref member centre, so letting organisations manage all of their Crossref information in one place. How many DOIs they've registered? If there are any errors? How many resolutions they're seeing? who the contacts are listed on their account. So having one central place to be able to get this, because like a lot of organisations, we have information, we have reports, but it's provided across lots of different systems and we'd like to, to consolidate that. So I think I'm asking, 
what in about the information that you would like to see what do you struggle to find what do you need us to to report on for you um, and and we can in, we can include that in the development process the other thing that we're going to um, we're going to do in the next um, few months is we're going to release a new schema it won't anything that you're anything that you're registering at the moment that will still work we won't break break anything but this is we're updating the information that we collect to to collect better affiliation information so including ROAR we're going to support the collection of DOIs for grants connected to articles and provide better support for linking articles to data um, in the in reference lists because more and more we're seeing um, we're seeing publications want to link articles to the underlying data that supports them to help with um, to help with trust and the reproducibility of research. And we also have an event data service, which we haven't had enough developers to, to work on recently. But event data will tell you about how your, your DOIs are being shared on things like Twitter, on Wikipedia, um, on Reddit, and being cited by other um, other research, such as um, an article being cited by a by a data set. We think it's a really good tool, and it has an integration in OJS called Paper Buzz. But because um, we haven't been able to reliably support the service, the inf it can be it can be slow or the information can be can be hard to get so we're going to we're going to have a developer work solely on this service so hopefully next time that i speak to you i can give you better information about what you can see using event data but just to to say that we haven't forgotten about it we are working on it and it'll be better over time and the final piece to say from from this presentation is that, as I said, we we do have a support team as well at at Crossref, and you can feel free to ask Isaac, Shane, or Paul any questions. And they also help look after our community forum and answer questions on that as well. We're starting to run Ask Me Anything. Um, sessions that anyone can join and we also have a blog which is a really good way to keep up to date with with what we're working on said so I I'm I do have slides to cover metadata manager as well but I wanted to sort of stop after these updates and see if people had questions at at this point thank you yeah thank you Rahel. Uh, there are uh, there is only one question from Rata D. Uh, he is also the cross ambassadors here. He is asking: Is there any about planned uh, in the future for Crossref with PKP, uh, PKP to develop plugin for Crossmark? Is there any plan for doing with these things? While, yes. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a good question um because i used to work as the product manager on crossmark and it's it's tricky to implement because there are so many different pieces um so in early 2021 pkp are going to work with us to develop a specific plugin for for crossmark in ojs so my our hope is that that will be developed in the first half of 2021 okay. that's that's what we're and um, we've we're in the final stages of signing an agreement with them but they have a developer who wants to work 
on that um so so hopefully soon yeah yeah okay so it's already answered and uh, we really hope that the program will launch soon and if you want to launch it in indonesia of course as usual uh we are very pleased to have uh, another session of uh, online seminar to explain about these things okay then you can continue with the second presentation Rachel you go really uh, really good we re I really enjoy your presentation with with this slow pitch. <laughs> I know <laughs> I know that you work hard for this <laughs> no I, well I um, no, I'm, I, I hope it's okay, but no, thank you. Yeah, it's you. okay. I, it's very okay and very informative. Yeah, you can continue with the second uh, explanation about the update manager. Uh, sorry, cool. metadata manager, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, let me bring up my... Okay, uh, Bapak-Ibu yang mau tanya mungkin sambil kita menunggu, bisa langsung di chat box saja ya, supaya nanti bisa lebih efisien. Okay. Okay, let me just I will do. unmute myself. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to um the the second um the second thing that I'd been asked to to talk about is um, is using metadata manager at um, at Crossref, and metadata manager is um, is a tool that we built to help members register content with us, um, including things like author names, orchids affiliations article titles and all lo lots of useful information about a paper that will help that will help it be discovered in those tools and services that that I mentioned earlier when crossref started the type of information that we would collect would be very basic title author publication date but over time um our members have come to us and said, well, there's lots of other useful information that's connected to journal articles. For example, if you publish open access, it's useful to make that information available in a computer readable way. So through the metadata, um, and that can help it be used in open access databases or by anyone who wants to, to wants to use the research. So providing information like that to Crossref means that more people are able to use the, use the research in downstream tools and services. I've already mentioned things like information on who funded the research, ORCID IDs, making relationships between items such as a preprint and an article that's then published, and also providing um, abstracts. So our members were finding that they were sending one set of information to Crossref, and then sending a slightly different set of information to somebody else. So they sort of thought, well, we could do this all through one place and because Crossref makes it openly available then um, then it then it then it, it saves me work so this is all useful information but equally it's a lot of information and there are lots of ways to register content with with Crossref we have some members who just upload xml files directly or um, or send them to us um, send them to us programmatically. We've got a really simple web deposit form where you can just cut and paste information. The OJS plugin, which a lot of which a lot of you will be using, 
but at the moment the OJS plugin and the web deposit form don't necessarily collect all of this additional information um, that, that, that journals can provide. And they can also make it difficult to update and supplement information. So we built Metadata Manager, which currently only supports journal content, but it aims to, it aims to collect a lot of, a lot of the, the sort of optional metadata that members can provide and also to make it easier for members to be able to, to make corrections and additions to their journal metadata um, rather than having to re-enter it all again. In, these, um, in this presentation, I was going to, to walk through the, the metadata manager. Get confused. When you log into Metadata Manager for the first time, you won't see any of your existing publications in there. So sometimes people expect to log in and see their publications and information that they've already registered with Crossref. The first time you log in, you'll need to add that. When you're logged in, you'll be able to see the, the Crossref username that you logged in with. You'll have a home screen, a deposit history with anything that you've um, sent to Crossref via Metadata Manager. And organ journals can also see if they have anything waiting to deposit. But the first time that you log in, what you'll need to do is, if you've already registered content with Crossref, you'll need to just do a search for your publication or pub publications that you that you want to work on. Um, so in this example, the the member has already done a search for their publication, Education Sciences Journal, and then they've added that into their Metadata Manager home screen so that they can work on that journal. So it's, that's my top tip to always search for existing publications and add them. If you start to try to add things as new publications that already um, that already exist, it can get it can get a bit messy. So once you have your, your publications added to the home screen in, in Metadata Manager, what you can do is um, you can click on the publication itself. And again, maybe you've got the name of the publication wrong or you want to make some changes and you can just click on edit if you need to change any information related to that publication. If I click on that um, into um, a specific publication, then the system will give me the option if I want to create a new issue or volume to register articles under. So I can provide things like the issue number, the title, if there is one. So anything highlighted with an asterisk is a required field. Anything without is optional. So you don't need to, I'm quite bad. I always think, oh, I should just fill in everything. You don't need to fill in anything that doesn't have an, an asterisk. You can provide a URL for the, the issue. You can provide print and online dates for the issue. If you archive 
the um, if your journal is archived in a specific location, then you can add that from a drop down list. And provide the the volume number and the the volume DOI and an URL. So if so you can you can provide an issue level information to then add um, to add articles under. When you come to add an article in Metadata Manager, you can see that these are all of the fields that, that, look, very, that look very familiar to you through working in OJS and other tools. The article title, the DOI that you want to register for that article, and the URL where that article sits online. print and online dates. Again, only the year is required here, but adding additional information on the month and the dates, um, the day of publications are also useful. The first and last page, um, page numbers um, can be put in and if you have an internal identifier for the for the article, you can use it. And the other important um, thing that this can collect is the is abstracts. Again, the the OJS plugin does register abstracts with Crossref, um, but for some organisations who don't use OJS, this is this is a way that they can use to submit abstracts to us. As I said, the, the important thing to note here is that that the information that I've just um, that we just looked at, that's really sort of bibliographic information, whereas we also collect information on the contributors or the authors or editors, the funding information, license, Article references can also be registered via Metadata Manager. Any related items. So if you wanted to point to a version that's, um, that's a translation of the article or, um, or related to an associated preprint and other additional information such as Crossmark can be provided um, via Metadata Manager. And it's worth noting that there, there's a little, there's a help section. So if you're using this for the first time, I'd recommend turning help on so that you can, um, which will give you additional information on the different fields and why they might be useful. Once you've filled out all of the, the information, you can, deposit, um, you can deposit the metadata via Metadata Manager. And the, the advantage of, one of the advantages of using um, this tool is that we'll show you if your deposit has been accepted and processed straight away. You don't have to wait or check your emails separately. We'll let you know straight away if, um, if everything has worked with your deposit. And we'll provide you a list of any deposits that you've made via the, via the service, via Metadata Manager in the past. And that can be useful as well because um, you can then go in to those previous deposits and make changes to the metadata if you need to, rather than having to start a whole new deposit. So if I click on this button, then I can look at my deposit history through Metadata Manager. So I can go in and I can see 
previous articles that I've registered via the tool. And if I click on the title, then that will take me in to the information on the um, on the article that I've registered. And I can then make changes to it and resubmit it to make to make um, to, to make any corrections. It's important to say that at Crossref, we don't charge for um, we don't charge for updates to DOIs or the correction of metadata. So if you do want to go in and fix things or make additional corrections, then then you can you can do so. And there's no charge associated with that. Because what we want to do is we want to make sure that the information the organization send us is, um, we want to help them make sure that the information is accurate. And the reason for that is because so many other organizations and tools and services want to make use of this information. So if it's out of date, if it's pointing to the wrong URL, um, then it means that it's more difficult for people to find your research. So we have this um, very simple search tool at Crossref. So say, for example, you're a new journal manager or editor and you've taken over from someone else. You could go in and do a quick search and, and see um, the previous articles um, that have been registered with Crossref. And, and make sure that everything looks okay with those. And so the, the important thing is really to, to keep the metadata up to date. Um, that means correcting errors, adding more metadata to an existing record, and updating the URLs if, um, if your journal moves to a new location on the web. I think out of these three things that the third one is really most important for us. Because when um, when you're linking between research using a DOI, that creates a persistent link. If the content moves, a publisher should come back to Crossref and update that information so that any time someone clicks on a DOI, they always get taken to the research at its current location on the web. Whereas if you just have a URL and it moves, you might never be able to find that content again. And that can, that can um, stop you in your research. So I think out of everything, these are my, the, the third one is kind of my, my, most, my, my most important. So Metadata Manager is, um, it's kind of I find it really useful to help me correct things if, for example, I discover an error after deposit. So say I say I put in one of the author's names incorrectly. Or I didn't put in the names of all of the co-authors and there's there's an author missing and that can cause problems for them in getting credit for the research. Said so if you update your website, <coughs> then you want to maintain the DOI links and make sure that they always point to the piece of content in the correct location. We also sometimes see it if an organization partners with another publisher and no, maybe no one is sure who's responsible for making the updates. Or if you host your content in multiple sites and, and where should the, the DOI point? This is, th these are all things that, um, that our members are, are, are sort of struggling with. So if something changes, then it's important to change and correct the metadata. Change the URL if a publication moves to another site. Where possible, and this happens when maybe two organizations are working together, if something already has a DOI, 
um, where possible, do not assign another DOI to something that already has one because that creates two records in our systems. It can be confusing for someone who's trying to cite the research and it can spread things like citations and usage over two or three instances of the paper, um, which, is, which is confusing. So you can work with us and work with the, any other organization you collaborate with so that we can update that information. And as I said, there's never a charge to update DOIs. So I wanted to walk through an example of sort of how a, an error can be sort of identified and then corrected um, in Metadata Manager. As I said, you can use Crossref Metadata Search to, to go in to search for a DOI and see the information associated with it. So in this article published in Information Standards Quarterly, you can see that something strange has happened whenever they've provided us with the, with the metadata. And they probably want to go in and, and, and fix that. The other thing that I see a lot here is sometimes journals will register an article, but they will only enter information on the first author, which means that the co-authors aren't getting credit for their work. So you can go in and add, adding additional, all of the, the authors on a paper when you register a piece of content is, again, really key to making sure that, that people get credit. So Metadata Manager will help you tr help with making sure that your the information that you're providing is accurate before and complete before you even send it to us. So in this example, if I try to make a deposit using Metadata Manager and I haven't provided some of the required information so for example, either a print or online date, then I will be prompted to, um, the, the system will prompt me to correct those errors before I submit the paper. And it won't let me click deposit until I do so. So it's trying to make sure that the information is complete before it gets sent um, to, to Crossref or before a, a journal tries to do that. So we can help you edit the, um, the information. Broadly speaking, um, it's possible to correct metadata if you have already deposited it. You can resubmit the full XML and overwrite the old record with new information. You can redeposit via the web deposit form or I wanted to look at editing the record in, in Metadata Manager. So to do that, you can go into the record um, and said click on the, the title of um, click on the title of the, um, the article that you've registered in that um, deposit history section. And that will give you a button that you can click on to edit the metadata that you've provided connected to the, to the article. You can see here that my colleague Isaac has done a pretty good job of providing the title, the DOI, landing page, dates, abstract, funding, license, and other information. So this is, this is pretty comprehensive, but if I want to make a change, then I can click on this edit button. And that will take me in so that I can make any changes to the, um, to the content. 
it said, and I can find this all in my, um, I can find this all in my, via my, my accepted um, deposit tools. It said, if you want to make a correction for an article that you didn't register in Metadata Manager, you can do a search again from this page. So say, you, say you've registered some articles with Crossref using OJS, you can still, you can go in and search for existing articles like the ones that you've registered using another tool and then edit them via Metadata Manager. So you can, you can edit anything that you've registered from here, but you might just need to add it in first. And then I can also said, access things from my, from my deposit history. But once I've clicked edit, sorry, this screen is a bit fuzzy. Then if I've clicked edit, then I'm able to go in to the information that I've submitted. And then I can just make any changes as I would on, on a standard web form. Edit the title, abstract, if I wanted to add more authors or add in the ORCID IDs for authors, then I can do that by clicking on the contributor tab. Once I'm happy that I've updated my metadata, then I can just click on this continue button to the top right of the screen. And this will take me to the deposit page where I can go ahead and I can make um, and I can I can redeposit the content. Um, so just following the following the blue buttons through the system will help me make redeposit any information. And again, it will tell me if the deposit is successful or um, or if there are any um, ongoing issues with it. And as I said, if you do see any issues, then contacting our support team is, is really good to do. It said, and the aim is really to, to have things so that the metadata can be accurate, that it can be complete, and that it can be up to date. And I think that sort of working in, in Metadata Manager can, can help that. It said a couple of things that I sort of wanted to um, to kind of point to, um, and it said we, we've I think we've got some times so that we can dig into this um, some more, but we do have sort of comprehensive help information on Metadata Manager on this page, which walks you through the process, and we've also got my colleague Laura did a YouTube video that walks you through the steps of, of using Metadata Manager, which is, it's always easier to kind of see things in practice than, um, than walk through it through some slides. Um, so I'd recommend having a look at both of, both of those things um, if you do want to, to use Metadata Manager to make edits and to, and to make changes um, in our systems. But again, I, I wanted to leave time for, for questions after I'd sort of showed you what, what the system can do and how it can be used. Uh-huh. You're trying to find something with the buttons or No, I will get I was trying to um I, I was I was I was trying to see if there were um if there were if there were questions. Um but yeah I can I can take questions now if if um if that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. For those who are still here, Bapak Ibu yang masih ada di sini, silakan saya persilakan untuk bertanya. Uh, they are asking about the 
PowerPoint. Can you share it? In, in make it into PDF and you can share with uh, the participants here. We will upload it in the our in our websites later on, Rahul. Or if you don't mind to, you can make it into PDF now and then you share it with the participants here. Yes. But it's okay. Don't, don't be in a rush. We are still waiting for the questions from the participants. Okay, everyone. Bapak Ibu yang mau bertanya, silakan. Kusuk banget ya mendengarkannya ya. Karena Rachel explain it very clearly. Uh, she talk very slowly to uh, make us understand about this meta and data manager because I think this is a new thing, Rachel, right? Your the applications that you show us just now, the metadata managers. There are some of uh, changes there. Yes, it is. It is quite a new thing that we've um, that we've been working on, and. Mm. At the moment, it it only supports the the registration of mm. journals. So we want to a we want to make it better for people. Mm. You know, just um, you know, just just very simply. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but we also want to make it so that it can support different different content types. Um. My, my, like, personally, my dream is that, um, that we can provide a system that will do extraction from PDFs. Yeah. So what I would, and one of my colleagues has, has worked on um, this kind of function in the past. So having it so that someone could upload a PDF and it would recognize the title, the authors, the abstract, and put that in. So the editors could just then make edits and then register the content rather than having to uh, having to add that that information from scratch so so I think for me that's that that's something that would make kind of significant improvements um for for editors or anyone trying to provide um information to crossref so that's that's what where we would like to get to with it thank you rahel for the explanation now oh, there is a question from Bapak muhammad ikhlas good afternoon indonesia time what time is it there, Rahel? <laughs> um, it's 10 past, um, so 9 a.m. with me oh, in the UK. still in the morning in the UK. Still in the morning, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would like to ask you regarding the important and benefits of the Crossref Metadata Manager, especially for novice researcher like graduate students. Uh, so this is the question. It's uh, generally asked about the benefits and how this is can be important for the novice researchers like graduate student. I mean, probably for those who are still in the beginning of their career as the researcher, right? I think you can uh, directly answer from your opinion, I think, and I help. Yeah, it's... I think for me, um, I think that some of the maybe... Uh, a benefit for um, for a graduate student using the um, using um, who's who's working on a journal um, and who's providing help for a journal and um, and working with Crossref metadata manager I think can be useful because you're able to see a breakdown of all of the information that's um, related to the article that's being sent to Crossref and then distributed to different tools and services. Um, the, o, the OJS plugin is a really good tool for registering content with Crossref, but because it kind of, because some of, because it's a plugin, some of the information and the, the collection of the information and that being sent to Crossref, it, it kind of works behind the scenes 
a little bit. So it can sometimes be hard to know for a journal exactly what information you're sending to Crossref. So I think if you're um, a graduate student and you want to get to a good understanding of metadata, indexing, and the type of information related to articles that's being used in research, then I think it's, it, it helps give an introduction to that. Okay, so it would be really important to find the information, right? Hmm. Probably you can show us uh, to, uh, with, you know that you just explained using the PowerPoint, could you uh, give examples with uh, the, you know, the browsers or something? So yep. the participants will understand how to, the steps, how to search so that they can, let's say they have the alternative to find uh, the visible, visible result of the articles or the visible result of the researchers itself. Rahel, if you <laughs> would like to share again from your browser. Thing. What do you think? Is it? Yeah, so, so, showing, mm -hmm. so showing how people can see kind of the okay. like the mm -hmm. like the downstream results of of sharing sharing of like sharing their research. Okay. Or or registering it with Crossref. Mm, I think the question we the question was about uh the the meta manage, the metadata manager itself cool. yeah uh, let me okay so let's uh, see see how it works in the in the real web in in real life <laughs> no it's real web okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Okay, so we log in with our usernames. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ini Bapak Ibu ya, mau disimak. Mungkin gimana caranya mencari ini kalau saya tangkap dari pertanyaannya. Uh, I'm sorry Rahel, I'm talking in Indonesia to make it clear with the participant. I don't want to ex uh, make you like excluded by using my language. <laughs> no, no, totally. I I wish I could. I wish I could speak Indonesian. Uh, it's easier than English. Indonesia is easier and simpler. You can. English is so. Tr it's English <laughs> yeah. is ridiculous. I know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought that only Indonesian people think about that. But no, I I firmly agree. <laughs> Yeah, Indonesian, it's very simpler and easy to understand and easy to learn. So you need about two months to to learn about this language. Just live here two months and talk to me in Indonesian. You will uh, will be a no, uh, no vice that's, person that's what to I mean. talk. <laughs> yeah, after this, it will be your pocket list to go to Indonesia, right? Yeah. Okay. Bapak Ibu silakan ini dip, diperagakan sama Rahel secara live bagaimana mencari data dalam riset uh, men, metadata manager ya. Kalau ada pertanyaan silakan nih dari tadi Pak Rato di aja yang tanya. <laughs> Oke, okay, uh, Rahel you can continue with your explanation with this web. So what I can do on my on my home page is that I can add mm -hmm. one of my journals using this um, using so the, this search tool. Okay, the search tool. Can we use the keyword of, uh, let's say, the subject of the journal? Yes. Um, okay, that's great. This is our this is our test account, so it's a little bit it's a little bit slow. But yes, um, so if I search on in this example mm -hmm. metadata, then I could choose this journal and add it to my homepage. 
Mm -hmm. So it'll bring up details of the journal. I could choose the language, archive, mm -hmm. and I can put down the Oh, and then it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't. It doesn't want me to add this one. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna break things. Um, but normally it will bring up the DOI for the mm -hmm. for the for the journal, and then I can add it, and it will appear on this screen so I can go I can go into the record for the journal and then maybe if I've already submitted some articles via metadata manager or started to provide these then they'll be listed here so if I want to add a new article then I can click on new record and I can create a new article or a new volume or issue to put that article into. So I think for, I think for today, I can just create a new article. Okay. Um, just a sec, somebody. So I can put in the, um, the DOI and you can see again that the help is showing me information mm -hmm. on what I can be registering. So it, it's trying to, it's, it's trying to make sure that I understand what I'm putting in, in the different mm -hmm. fields. I can do publication dates or I can use the calendar. And I can put in the, the date or the, the pages. Um, it said, and then these sections are that additional information. So if I click, then I can open up who the contributors are. So in this instance, I'm going to I'm going to put myself as the author. I can put in my affiliation. I said in an in future this will collect the, the ROAR IDs, as I mentioned earlier. I can put in my ORCID ID. So I'd save that. It's my, my browser knows my ORCID ID. And then what role I'm playing. So here I'm just going to say that, that I'm the author. And then I can add new if I want to add any additional authors to the paper. So I could add our, my executive director if I want to. And let's make him an author as well. So say for today, I don't know his ORCID ID straight up, but maybe I want to go back and add that in future, that this is the kind of information that I could go back and edit. I could also provide information on who's funded the research. So um, maybe I'll look for... Okay, so maybe I want to look at an orthopedic research in the UK, and then I could enter a grant number if I know that. Mm -hmm. 
I can provide license information. So some publishers will make an article not open access, but they will make it free to read. So I can say if that's the case. And then I can provide the um, I can provide the license of the of the article. If you're publishing open access, um, chances are you'll be using one of the um, the standard Creative Commons licenses. Um, so you can enter the license information. Sorry, this is bad license information. And then there's, um, there's version information. So for Creative Commons, I'd always advise looking up the, um, the license information and entering it, like copy and paste it. Don't sort of make up your own URLs like I've been doing here. And you can choose what that applies to. Maybe there's a specific license for the accepted manuscript or for text mining. But realistically, if you're working with open access and you want to register, um, to register that the, the information is available under a Creative Commons license, I would choose version of record because that will that will sort of cover everything. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah. go on. No, no, it's okay. Just continue. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got um I've got a section here for my reference list okay. or um or bibliography. And maybe it's worth if we have two minutes, I I can just show how this piece works. Um let me just Okay, let me just find quickly. Um, let me just find an article. Okay. So if I have some references what I can do is I can just copy my references in here. Split them out a bit. And see if Crossref can match any of my references to, to DOIs. I think in this example, it's probably a lot of, um, I can see that they're looking a lot at a lot of sort of funder reports, which might not necessarily have DOIs, but if they do, if any of the references do have DOIs, we'll try to match those up and show you the potential DOIs for the for the references so that you can register those alongside just the, the, the reference text. You can also relate the article to other items. So if I wanted to say that um, I'm going to use a DOI, it's a so say I'm going to link to another related item. So maybe I have a maybe I have a translation that's related to this um, to this article. Um, maybe the article I'm publishing is a translation of something else. Then I can show that it's related to something else using the DOI if I want to do that. And then there's room for the collection of additional information. Um, so if you are participating in similarity check, you should provide the full text of the, um, a link to the full text of the article so that it can be indexed for use in the similarity check service. Again, you can provide the language um, for the article if you want to do so. Um, or the, the archive location. So I know that um, there are additional archives that we want to add to this list. Um, and then finally, um, there's a section for cross mark information. So 
you can add cross market metadata on publication history, peer review, additional um, or additional information here. Um, but I would say is that I think that I think that with Crossmark, I think that the OJS plugin is going to be is going to end up being a really good way to do that. Once I've submitted all of this information, I'm going to go back up to the top and I'm going to click continue. And what I can do is this is saving the information I can, as I go along. So I can just save it and go away and do something else. Or if I want to continue with this work, then I can click on review and that will let me review the information that I've filled in just to check for, for any errors or anything that I've missed. And when I'm happy with that, then I can click on the blue add to deposit button. And when I've done that, it's added the it's added the paper into my to deposit list. So I can see under the 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 journal that that I'm using, I can see that I've got the record here that I've just created. If I ever want to go back to it, so say I wanted to set up, you know, say I wanted to enter details on five or six manuscripts because I want to deposit an issue at a time, then I could add these all in here um, and set them all up. And then I can click to select those and I could duplicate a record. I could move it to another issue. I could remove it. Or if I ever want to, then I can transfer the title to, to another publisher if someone else is gonna take, like if another publisher is gonna take it over. But if I'm ready to deposit the, the paper with Crossref, I can click on to deposit. And that's going to show me the records that I have in there. This is, so I've got one called related works under this journal and the one that we did today under our journal. And let me see what I've done wrong. So it's flagging up that I've entered an invalid ORCID ID or an invalid related item DOI. So I can go back and fix those. So I've got my ORCID ID. Maybe it'll like that. And then maybe so maybe it wants a registered. So I can check this. Oh, and it's still not happy with my ORCID ID. I can fix that. It's, it's, I can fix that in another time. Um, maybe it likes that. So I can go in and I can make any edits. And when I'm ready to deposit, so I can review everything.
get rid of that. And then once I'm ready and once it's happy with everything that I've got in this section, then I can go ahead and I can go ahead and click the um, click the deposit button. It will say that it's processing. And then straight away, I'm going to get a message to let me know if this has been successful or not. And I can click on the DOI. And make sure that it's worked. I think again, in this instance, because it's a test deposit, we were not actually linking it to um, to anything. But I can check that that's I can check that that's worked. And if I look in my deposit history, then I'm able to see really quickly that that article is in my deposit history. I can search for other deposits that I've registered in the past. And as I said, if I want to go back and, um, and make any corrections to something that I've registered before, then I can click into it. and go back and make any and go back and make any changes. So if I wanted to change this to being published in 2019 and add a month. I can add that to the deposit. And then I can redeposit that and that will update the metadata with um, with the additional information that I've added to it. Um, so again, it's accepted the deposit. All is well. And if I look in my deposit history, then I can see that, you know, I can see the dates on when I, I made that those deposits. So, again, this this can kind of be helpful if you're working with other people on a journal and you're all using Metadata Manager. You can go in and see who's done um, who's who's done, you know, what work on the um, who's done other work on the on the journals, which deposits have been submitted via Metadata Manager and you can make any corrections to them from here. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. That's, that's kind of the, the most, I think that's the kind of things that people are working on on Metadata Manager. But if there's anything that you want to know if it can do other things, if there are other pieces of functionality that I've missed, then, um, th then please ask. Okay. There are two more questions in the chat box, Rahel. <laughs> Do you still? Uh, I think this this will be the last question for us today. There are two questions about the metadata manager. Uh, so this is Ratodi again. He asks, uh, what about the previous content registration system? Is it gradually will be deactivated or still running? And the second one, it's about the problem that uh, the problem in Indonesia. There are still uh, many of us using the OGS version two, and the number is very huge. And as I recall, it he said that uh, Ratodi said that it does it does not have the ref linking plug in. Is there any alternative? Besides using the simple text query, thank you, Marcel. <laughs> no, also also good questions. So yeah, yeah. The um the, the previous the, con mm -hmm, the previous content. It will it will still be running. Okay, so it will be fine with the previous data, right? Yeah. And how about the second one? It's about the OGS two version. They don't have any uh, ref linking plugin. It, it it 
doesn't and I know that um, OJS are sort of they're they're keen to work on version three going yes. forward, which which means that people can be stuck. At the moment, it said you can you can deposit reference linking in from you can do reference linking via you said simple text query and you can register the information using metadata manager what we do want to do is we want to make simple text query better but i don't think that there are plans to go back and provide a reference linking version for ojs version 2 um just because i think that they worry that they would struggle to support that mm -hmm. okay so there is no, uh, you know, the development of this OGS2 probably will not uh, about this ref linking plugin, I think, because they already developed the OGS3. Yeah, I, I think so. I think it's sort of a resource mm -hmm. thing on, you know, on, on their part. But I, I hope that we can make we can make tools and I, and I hope as well that you know that they can help make it easier for publications to migrate yes. as well because I know that that's a lot of work yes <laughs> it's gradually make the journal managers to think about migration to the OGS3 I think yeah I, I think you know as you said it's it's to kind of encourage that <laughs> okay. behavior but I know that they that they need to make that easier for mm. you know for journal managers also i think sometimes you know people with oh this version three but sometimes you know early versions of things can be a little bit okay um, <laughs> but but so i think with the the other cross ref improvements i hope that will help yeah yeah i know that okay rahel uh, i think that's the last two questions from our participant Bapak Ibu ada yang mau tanya lagi, raise hand langsung unmute aja. Kalau tidak ada, because it's already exceed our time limit. We plan to end at 3 uh, p.m. Uh, in Oxford time, it's probably um, it's already more than uh, 30 minutes. Okay, Bapak Ibu, kalau nggak ada. Saya bisa say goodbye to Rahel then. Rahel, no. do you have more closing statement or more messages for all journal managers that becomes the participant today? No, honestly, just to say thank you very much for inviting me and it was nice to nice to see you, nice to see you again, but I hope it was useful and please do get in touch with any questions. Of course. This, this will be very useful because uh, we have uh, so many new informations and all of your explanation will be uploaded in, in our YouTube channel. Um, I will send you the link with this YouTube and you can comment later if uh, there are uh, the participants that late for listen or they need more information, they can uh rewatch it through our youtube channel the hell it's a very it's a very uh you know it's a very blessed for us to have you here for the first chapter of our annual meeting because actually we plan for five chapters so this is the first week uh, in the next week we will have uh, discussions about the authenticate and so on jadi bapak ibu nanti di uh, Minggu depan itu uh, uh, our discussions will be with the DOI teams. Then wait for the posters. We will spread out the posters. Dan seperti biasa Bapak Ibu hari ini semua seminar online yang diselenggarakan LGA untuk yang Crossref for this annual meeting all of them are free. Uh, except you want to have the certificate so there will uh, charge for the certificate only but for joining this session would be free of charge and i i have to say many thanks for Rahel for joining us today and explain very clearly i know that uh, you know your pace is very slow because of us i really appreciate that 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rahel. Yeah, Bapak Thank Ibu. you. Uh, kita akhiri saja hari ini. Kalau tidak ada pertanyaan lagi, saya tidak perlu memberi uh, closing statement. Kalau ada pertanyaan, bisa langsung ke forum ya.